Hello everyone, welcome to the secrets of Scorpio and Aquarius signs. On this video, I'm talking about the reason why they are the most karmic signs in the zodiac and what the deep implications of this are. These are deeply held secrets, great occult knowledge which is only available within the Vedic astrology system. So, I'm going to give you the information, get ready for it, hold tight to your chair. And by the way, I'm only using sidereal zodiac. This will not work with tropical signs. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Let's begin. Scorpio and Aquarius are very powerful signs. If you have planets in these signs in your chart, or they are even rising, you need to know the secrets behind the karmas, because some people have even called these signs cursed, and we definitely need to decode this. So what is the word cursed meaning? If you're from a Western tradition, it sounds pretty frightening, right? Because it brings up all connotations of medieval witches and wizards and a spell being put upon you from which you cannot escape. But it's simply a translation of the word dosh. In the Vedic astrology, there are many of these dosh, which actually mean heavy karmas are present in certain conjunctions and in certain signs. In this case, Scorpio and Aquarius. But why is this? The reason is, everybody, that Rahu and Ketu, the nodes of the moon that carry our karmas from lifetime to lifetime, have co-rulership of these signs. Ketu is co-ruler with Mars of Scorpio and Rahu co-ruler with Shani of Aquarius. So, if you have planets in these two potent signs, in any Varga chart whatsoever, those karmas are ripe and very important to understand. And if you have ascendant in these signs, once again, in any Varga chart, that area of your life has potent karmas. So let's analyze this a little more deeply. Scorpio is the eighth sign of the zodiac. It is a most important turning point in human evolution. It's where self-awareness and spiritual realization begins. It's where the Kundalini rises in mankind. But because of this, Scorpio actually contains some very negative and difficult troubling karmas that are ripe to be released. Scorpio is a water sign, but also a fixed sign, represented metaphorically as a deep, unfathomable lake. But the waters in the lake quickly become stagnant, poisonous and dangerous. And so basically this lake contains the karmas that must urgently be released. The scorpionic karmas that we experience are those of fear, jealousy, revenge, hatred and dread, very difficult past life experiences, often containing trauma and violence. Because these karmas are so troublesome, to release the Scorpio karmas is no easy thing. It's virtually going from the depth of night into the day, from the darkness to the light. They are clinging to our soul and suffocating us, but we are so attached to these feelings and this way of being. You see, Pandit Sanjay Rath has talked about suffering involved in releasing these Scorpio karmas, which is definitely true. But let's remember everybody, suffering is not just about Scorpio. Every single sign in the zodiac contains karmas which are positive and negative involving very difficult situations for all of us sometimes but the Scorpio karmas have one special factor and that is connected to the eighth house this is the house in the natural zodiac which is connected to Scorpio. The eighth house represents in our chart, as we all know, death, rebirth, rejuvenation, difficult situations and traumas that come just out of the blue sometimes that we have to deal with. And so in this way, when Scorpio deals with these Scorpionic karmas, they are transformed completely. They become almost reborn, a new person, even in this lifetime. It's very dramatic. Have you noticed, everybody, how some people can go through really hell and high water in their life and yet they don't change at all? They're the same person. These sort of people have the attitude, well, that's just life. The roll of the dice in life, I just get on with it. Well, that's great, but that's not what Scorpio is about. When Scorpio goes through the difficult situations in life, Scorpio is turned around, transformed, which is a wonderful blessing, in fact. 
It's actually the blessing of K2, the co-ruler of Scorpio, which allows you to truly turn away from the past. Many of the Scorpio karmas which we have to face in life are karmas which mean we have to completely get rid of the past. We have to walk away from difficult negative situations or even people. We have to transform our own behavior. We have to be a new person to even survive. We have to start from scratch, going from the top to the bottom many times in life. These are the sort of karmas associated with Scorpio and K2 is going to help you through this. Check the strength of K2 in your chart because K2 will give you the strong will, determination and detachment to walk through these karmas unscathed and come out a stronger person. Also check Mars. Mars will definitely give you courage if he is strong in your chart. Scorpionic people are never defeated. Don't forget that. They rise again from the ashes. But this time they will come cleansed of so many difficult karmas. And this, as I say, is a great blessing. You don't want to be taking these karmas into another lifetime. None of us want to have negativity sticking to us. So the transformations, the changes, the revolutions that Scorpio brings, even though they are difficult, are definitely welcome. So Scorpio karmas are nothing to be afraid of, everybody. Do not let fear grip your soul. In fact, the eighth house is about the overcoming of fear. And Scorpio, believe me, has more strength than any sign to overcome these fears. Let's have a look now at how these Scorpio karmas may be manifesting in your life. If you have Scorpio rising in your chart or rising in any Vargo chart, then your life itself or indeed the situations represented by the Vargo chart are going to go through great transformations almost continually. You're going to go from the height to the depth, from the top to the bottom, almost at a whim when events seem to shift things unexpectedly in your life. You will learn, however, to deal with these transformations as the karmas churn and you get rid of, as I've talked about, these negative emotions and situations. So expect your life to be one of great transformation where things are changing, as I say, unexpectedly, but ultimately put you on the right path. Now to the planets in Scorpio. If you have the sun in Scorpio, you can face difficulties with your father, authority figures or government agencies. You have to watch for pride and ego in dealing with these situations. If you have the moon in Scorpio, your emotions are extremely strong and actually very intense. But because the moon is debilitated here, those negative emotions I've discussed on this video, the fears, the phobias, the anxieties, and of course the jealousies will be coming up in your emotional nature always to be transformed during this lifetime. Your relationship with your mother is intense but may be very difficult and relationship with other people who you bond closely to also go through dramatic transformations. If you have Mercury in Scorpio, there can be great transformations and karmas connected to deep friendships in your life, which are periodically transforming. In the same way, watch your speech because you can be sharp, caustic, even sarcastic at times, and you can actually cause more hurt than you might mean to. If you have Venus in Scorpio, your relationships are impacted. Whether you are male or female, the marital bond will be impacted by sometimes jealousy, intrigue and difficult emotions. You are extremely intense in your love interests, but you have to make sure that you are not overwhelming the other person and that you are completely honest and open at all times. With a male chart, this will particularly impact relationship with the spouse who may be scorpionic in her nature but it's more likely that it's your karma's dealing with spousal relationships so honesty and openness with venus in scorpio is definitely needed mars in scorpio gives you great intensity of purpose in life because mars is strong in own sign but the karmas if they are negative due to affliction can be around anger issues revenge all sorts of karmic issues around jealousy and possessiveness you have to watch out for those and also watch relationships with your brothers if you do have brothers they are intensely karmic in nature 
Jupiter in Scorpio can be helpful because Jupiter will increase your spiritual knowledge and your wisdom ever throughout your life and this wisdom will see you through many difficult situations. If you are female, husband will completely change your life in some way, maybe even turn it upside down. But there is wisdom to be gained through this situation. All depends on so many other aspects, obviously. But Jupiter Scorpio will, will make you learn from children. You learn from children, you gain from from them and they gain from you. It's about giving of your wisdom to others in all circumstances. Saturn in Scorpio is always about the need to control. So what you have to do is try to let go a little bit more because the house where you have Saturn in Scorpio, you will be tempted to manipulate, to maneuver things, even in secret ways to get what you want. And that's when the karmas come back big time. You have to relax a little bit more here. Let things be because Saturn in Scorpio gives you definitely the ability to persevere through great difficulty. If you have Rahu in Scorpio, watch for deception in the area where this Rahu sits. You may be deceived or you may be deceiving. Make sure it's not you because the karmas come back really strong with this Rahu. You have a very strong desire nature, but also you can find that as quickly as you get what you want, you find that you do not want it anymore. Rahu once again is causing you to learn detachment and letting go. If you have K2 in Scorpio in his own sign, you have the strength to walk away from many difficult situations in your life. You have great inner reserve. K2 in Scorpio will help you to transform those negative emotions I've discussed on this video. But if you have other planets with K2 in the same sign, it's going to complicate it tremendously and you will be continually having to set yourself a new task to avoid the negativities of revenge, manipulation, jealousy, all of those factors. But Scorpio K2 will help you win the battle most certainly. Aquarius. Aquarius is the 11th sign of the zodiac, the penultimate sign before Pisces. So Pisces is the liberating sign. Aquarius is the stage before that. What has to happen is that the ego of man has to be broken in this sign. That is why the picture this water pitcher here, which is being held by the man, is actually pouring out water because it's broken. It's broken and the water is pouring forth. So just as this water is being lost from the pitcher, just pouring away, in this way, Aquarius represents some form of loss in life. This is the big secret. But don't be afraid of this as a purpose behind it. So something has to be given away. Something has to go from your life where Aquarius is placed. Aquarius is also associated, obviously, with the 11th house of the chart, the chart where we gain our desires in life and also where we get monetary reward. Now, Aquarians might have plenty of these things in their life by other factors in their chart, but the fact is that Aquarius is here to do one thing in principle, and that is to give away what they have as much as they can. Their time, their energy, their resources, they have to give forth of these to others. It's a karmic debt. Why is there this debt? Because the opposite sign is Leo. Leo is the king. Leo has possessed fame, success, and all sorts of material resources. Aquarians, Aquarian planets had these last life, but due to certain karmas now, there is a debt. And the debt has to be repaid to service, with service to humanity in some way. And not just humanity, because Rahu represents the non-human form. So very often, Aquarian people, a strong Aquarius in a chart, will give you the need to take care of the non-human forms as well. So this noble aim of giving to others, of giving of what you have gained, is so important for Aquarius, of their time and their energy. The issue is, though, that it's not so straightforward or easy. These Aquarian karmas will be relenting. You will have to find yourself putting ego behind you time and time again, serving others, forgetting about your needs and thinking about others. It's just a necessity of the karma. 
But despite the good deeds in the world, there is in Aquarius a certain bitterness and it comes from the losses encountered. You see, the losses in life can leave Aquarius with a real sense of regret and remorse or even inability to let go. Pandit Sanjay Rath has talked about it as a poison in the mind. Oh, I cannot live without this job. I cannot live without this person. I cannot live without my status. Whatever it is that has been lost in Aquarius, it's not easily let go. But this heaviness in the mind is actually coming from Rahu. It is an illusion of Rahu, the smoke and illusion. And actually, when Aquarius can get the strength to let go of this, they will definitely find that Shani, the ruler in his own multicone sign here, will burr them up and give them the most tremendous help and steadiness in life. So do not let regret, remorse and feelings of bitterness overwhelm you if you have strong Aquarius factors. Let go and Shani will surely support you. Now, how will these Aquarian karmas manifest by the various placements in your chart? When you have Aquarius rising in your chart, and this applies also to other Varga charts, individual to what that chart is about, Aquarius rising means that you have to put others first. You are here to serve others. You have to sacrifice for others. You have to really give in that area of life. It isn't something which is just going to give you pleasure. It isn't something which is all going to be about you. Now, you might say, well, that's the same for everybody, isn't it? No. With Aquarius, there's a real karma here that every time you you try to refocus on yourself, things go not so well. So for Aquarius, it's a constant service. It's a constant sacrifice. But if Shani is strong in your chart and if Rahu is not troubling you too much, this can be very good. And actually, you can get even fame notoriety from this. The trouble is, the more fame Aquarius rising gets, the more they have to deflect that from themselves. If you attempt to become like the opposite sign, Leo, and have the spotlight on yourself, you will get no satisfaction and it can actually bring back difficulties into your life. So it's a continual effort. Aquarius, you are here to serve humanity. You are here to do something particularly special that is of use to humanity. It's never just about you. If son is in Aquarius in your chart, there can be loss in connection to the father. Father may leave your life, father may die, father may get sick, or even father in extreme circumstance may not be known to you. Aquarius son also represents government employment, so you may have government posts, but there may be some losses in respect to this. But again, you have to see other factors in the chart and house placement. If this sun in Aquarius is very prominent in your chart, like in 10th house, you may get name, fame and status, but there will be some point at which there is some loss in regard to this. If your moon is in Aquarius, there can be loss in connection with the mother in some way. In the emotional nurturing factor of the mother, she is in some way detached or not available as a maternal figure sometimes. Moon in Aquarius also impacts your nature because you become quite detached and unemotional due to the stress and strains of life sometimes. You turn away from emotional nurturance, becoming extremely independent. Mercury in Aquarius can give you a very special speaking voice and a deeply magnetic personality in regard to public speaking, etc. But Mercury represents friendships and can actually give you great breaks and loss in these friendships sometimes, and also sometimes with female siblings. When you have Venus in Aquarius, you are intensely independent in your love relationships. You want love and bonding in your life, but the Aquarian gives you this deep knowledge that in some way it's going to involve sacrifice and loss. And so you don't want to get too involved. But nonetheless, 
marriage will involve some element of sacrifice where you have to give of yourself, of your time, of your energy, more than what you would have expected. If you have Mars in Aquarius, you have definite workaholic tendencies. Mars in Aquarius is always giving, always working for the greater good, which is good in a way, but Mars is frustrated and angry sometimes in this sign because Shani is restricting the Mars energy and Rahu is bringing out anger issues. So you have to be in touch with these because sometimes this can lead you into difficult situations, particularly in your workplace. Jupiter in Aquarius will increase your tendency for sacrifice of self and giving to others, which is good. You may have to sacrifice for your children. You may have to sacrifice for your husband. You may have to actually give away wealth because of various circumstances in your life. If you have Saturn in Aquarius, Saturn in his own multicone sign will give you a great deal of determination to serve humanity. More than that, you want to serve the most underprivileged. You generally normally want to do this from the depth of your heart. But Saturn in Aquarius, if he is well aspected and, and well placed in your chart, can actually put you in a prominent position of success. You can get status with this Saturn in Aquarius. One thing for sure though, when you get that high status job, you will be required to give far more than you could ever imagine. It will demand so much of you. If you have Rahu in Aquarius, Rahu in own sign here, it's going to be a very powerful karmic situation. You are here to do a great service to humanity, often in some sphere of your life. No matter how small, you have to give of yourself 100% with 100% attention to that service. It's a great purpose in your life. And if you follow it, you will fulfill a great karma for certain. When K2 is in Aquarius, it can be a deep dissatisfaction with life and with attaining goals in life. So because Scorpio is the 10th house from Aquarius, you can gain what you want in life and and then find frequently there is no satisfaction in it. Karma here is to keep on with your service work, keep on with your giving and your charity, even if it doesn't seem to be giving you any satisfaction at all. Remedial measures are most necessary when we have Scorpio Aquarius strong in our charts. Scorpio remedial measures as given by Pandit Sanjay Rath are twofold. First of all, there's a way that you have to calm down Mars and K2 in your chart. You do this by avoiding Mongol factors, these Mars factors such as violence. Being vegetarian definitely helps fasting on Tuesday, etc. For Aquarius, again, it's calming down Rahu and Shani. So once again, helping the old, the sick, and of course, helping non-human beings is essential to pacify Rahu. In addition to this, however, because the karmas go so deep in these two signs, Pandit Sanjay Rath has made it very clear that mantra is absolutely necessary to release these karmas. So, for Scorpio, it is recommended that you worship Vishnu. And for Aquarius, for those karmas, Shiva. What if you have got planets in both Scorpio and Aquarius in your chart? I will give you another mantra that is very powerful to deal with this situation. One suggestion for Scorpio would be the beautiful Vishnu mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, so powerful, even recommended directly by Padashara. This mantra will help you deal with Scorpio karmas 108 times a day minimum, and I will post example video below. For Aquarius karma is the beautiful and powerful Shiva mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, 108 times a day, again is most helpful. Some people have both Scorpio and Aquarius karmas so strong in their chart. In this case, you need the help of the Maha mantra, which will protect you because you cannot really as again, Pandit Sanjay Rath has told us, you cannot really just pray to Lord Vishnu and then Lord Shiva. It has to be one or the other. So, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This Maha Mantra will protect you if you have both Scorpio and Aquarius Karma. Again, 108 times a day. And I will actually post below video to help you. 
Finally, let's look at the impact of Scorpio and Aquarius on all rising signs. You can apply this to your D1 birth chart, but also to every Virgo chart as well, and indeed even to your moon sign. For Aries moon, Aries Lagna, both Scorpio sign is eight houses away from your ascendant or moon sign, ruled by Mars, your own ruler. So actually this benefits you in that the crises of life, which can be very frequent sometimes for Aries, sharp and frequent and deep changes have to happen suddenly in your life. You deal with these really well. When there is a crisis, Aries rises in a warrior way to deal with it. And you can be very helpful to other people also. But joint finances can be turbulent and deep karmas in dealing with these will definitely be there. Aquarius occupying the 11th house of your chart shows that losses and sacrifice are necessary in regard to your friendship network circles. They can leave your life suddenly or you have to give far more to your friends than they seem to be giving to you. Sometimes again though, strength of Saturn will be important to see here. You are going to have so many fluctuations in your income stream though. It's up and down and the best remedy is to give Give a little to charity because if you give, if you accept that loss, that sacrifice here, it will secure income for you. Taurus moon, Taurus Lagna Scorpio is the seventh house of your chart. Your ruler is Venus, Mars rules this passionate seventh house and it's all to do with the past karmas coming back. The turbulent Scorpio karmas I've spoken about on this video are coming into your intimate spousal relationship. So depending on Mars and Ketu, they can be very turbulent, very emotional, very difficult, even sometimes traumatic to deal with in some cases. So you have to get yourself out of entwining relationship situations sometime. That can be obsession, passion, all sorts of difficult situations. One thing for sure though, you have to give so much to these relationships that it actually drains you of your own energy. You have to try to make time for yourself in all intimate relationships and that includes business partnerships also. Sometimes you are far better working for yourself. But if you don't work for yourself, you probably work for the government because Aquarius on the 10th house cusp gives very strong chance of government position or post. And this can be very successful because Saturn is your yoga karaka ruler of this Aquarius sign. But one thing for sure, Taurus must have vocation. You can't just be doing mundane job. You have to be giving something back to humanity because of Aquarius here. And Although you do that with your heart and soul, because Aquarius is loss as well, karmically, you may find loss of position may occur sometimes due to these karmas. Gemini moon, Gemini Lagna, Scorpio taking the sixth house in your chart brings you some difficult karmas for sure because the karmas of Scorpio, as I've described, come into your life in the form of conflicts with others. They can be deep rooted, some deep rooted grudges, jealousies, manipulative tendencies going on either from yourself or from your open enemies, as it were. Litigation factors can be deep, ongoing and troublesome. Them. Health issues, you often keep them to yourself. There is secrecy though, which, which you should be aware of because actually you might not even see a doctor sometimes when you need to. So more openness is needed. Conflict is something which you prefer to keep to yourself. The ninth house of your chart is Aquarius, where there is some loss and sacrifice necessary. So foreign travels are frequent in your life, but often they are in connection with some giving, some charity, some promotion of philosophy in some way, which is a good thing. The ninth house is your religious belief. There may be some deep loss here where you want to keep your religious belief, but somehow Doubts are always coming into your mind. You may have difficulty with your father. Father may be separated or taken away from you early or there is some misunderstanding there. 
For Cancer Moon and Cancer Lagna, Scorpio in the fifth house is actually a very fortunate position for Scorpio to be. All of these deep conflicts and karmas are definitely there, but you have done some good in regard to these difficult situations, and therefore Mars from Scorpio becomes your fifth lord, Yoga Karaka, bringing back good karmas from these situations. So it helps relationships with your children. It helps for deep bonds there. But you may become a bit obsessive about them and a bit possessive also. Your education should be good and you study well, particularly deep occult subjects. But Aquarius rules your eighth house, so when unexpected events happen, they can take a great deal of financial situations to sort out. You can lose financially through sudden unexpected events sometimes. This is also about giving occult knowledge because this is the eighth house of the deep knowledge universal truth. So Aquarius means you must give it away. You must let it go. You must never keep all of this knowledge to yourself. If you have Leo Ascendant or Leo Moon, Scorpio is in the fourth house of your chart, indicating the difficult Scorpionic karmas in connection with your mother. There may have been some struggle there or some difficulty for you. At least there was some difficult situation as you got older. Certainly there is some stress with mother's family also in some way. But of course, Scorpio is about the deep felt emotions in your heart. You have very strong, passionate nature, but conflicts in your domestic situation are common for you because Scorpio brings back past life situations into your home life. Home and hearth is not easy for you. Just being in the home brings out very domineering tendencies in you. Aquarius owns the seventh house of your chart. Shani is not a good friend to your Lord Son. There's a great conflict for you when you get into marriage, spousal, or even business situations. You like to be the boss. You like to be the one in charge. It's hard to compromise. It's hard to give. Marriage requires so much of you that sometimes it seems like a drain on your very being. And you can put up barriers which make relationships difficult sometimes. But because of Aquarius' karmic tendency to actually make sacrifice a factor, you just have to go along with this. And in sacrificing yourself a little bit, you can get the close, supportive bond that you definitely need. For Virgo Moon, Virgo Lagna, Scorpio rules the third house of your chart, the house of siblings. There are deep karmas connected with siblings. There can be difficulty, quarrels, contention, jealousy, all factors coming directly from past life connection with these very souls, actually. And also, due to karma, there may be no siblings at all. It's one or the other for Virgo, certainly. And your communication is very intense, passionate, but there can be many misunderstandings of your style of communication sometimes. Aquarius has the rulership of your sixth house. You want to help, you want to give, you want to serve from your heart and soul. It's the basis of who Virgo is. But because of the karmas of Aquarius, your desire to be of help and service to others can often, funnily enough, bring you into more conflict with them than anything else. People can even misunderstand your intention. But going into to healing arts, medicine, etc. can definitely help you get rid of some of these negative karmas because you have so much to give in many of these areas. But Virgo, watch your own health because Aquarius is the cardiovascular system which becomes very sensitive in your case. Libra Moon, Libra Lagna. Scorpio has your second house, the house of early childhood environment. There are some secrets there, some deep karmas coming to bear that you may not actually find out about some aspects of your early childhood life until much later on. Also, it's about money and dealing with it. You're actually a very business-orientated person. You can be very good dealing with 
finances, but you're secretive about it. And there can be manipulation and difficult factors going on. You just don't want anybody to know what you're doing with your money and it can bring you into conflict with your family. Again, this is a purely karmic situation. Your fifth house is ruled by Aquarius. This is all about where you are able to give service in life to humanity. You can become a teacher, someone who serves the greater good in education. And education becomes very favorable for you because Saturn is your yoga karaka planet. But you have to use education to serve others. What education you get, you have to give it to others. So as I say, teaching is a clear solution here. With your own children, it's about service again. Very often you give so much to your children, totally, but sometimes because of these Aquarian karmas, there are misunderstandings and you actually feel that that they are not listening to you. It may seem a very common thing, but it's a very karmic thing for Librans. Scorpio Moon and Lagna both. In addition to the readings I've already given on this video, of course, I hope you've checked those out, you are definitely going to have a transformative life, a life in which you end up as somebody almost different to how you began. So many ups and downs, it will be unbelievable. But a survivor is most definitely what Scorpio is. And you will gain spiritual insights, most definitely occult knowledge that will help you through these highs and lows in life. Aquarius ruling the fourth house of your chart from Scorpio shows that there is some loss in the very early childhood environment or the early home in environment was a very busy place where your needs were not totally met because there was so much else going on. Parents may have been involved mother particularly in humanitarian work etc sometimes in your own home it can be more of a workaholic environment because aquarius is ruling fourth house of home saturn is ruler here so you often work from home set up an office at your home which can be successful but the thing is it's all about giving it's not about that cozy home environment Sagittarius Moon and Sagittarius Lagna. Scorpio has your 12th house, foreign lands and loss. So definitely the Scorpionic karmas I've spoken about on this video are coming to you when you go into foreign lands. There's some deep karma attracting you to be in these foreign places. Some deep philosophy which you had been engaged with in your past life has come back now, but it will create conflict. Your philosophy creates endless conflict for you, endless contention sometimes because 12th house gives that element of contention. In your subconscious mind, you are always working out this philosophy. It is never a settled thing in your mind. But this is the house of giving sacrifice. So you can be intensely about giving of yourself, giving of your occult knowledge to other people. You like to preach, you like to teach, it's your very heart and soul. But because Scorpio has a lot to, to do with money factors, loss and giving away of your money to charity or to other causes will be happening, but sometimes loss itself due to unexpected karmic factors comes into your life and your financial situation can be very changeable indeed. Aquarius has rulership of your third house, Sagittarius, so you have to give to your siblings. It's not a two-way street very often here. The karmas of Aquarius, the karmas of sacrifice, giving and service are towards your early family and siblings. There may be many siblings. There may be a great deal of effort necessary when they are needy in life. It's all part of that service of Aquarius. The sacrifice of Aquarius also affects the third house through communication factors. The third house is always where you put your skill to the world. So Sagittarius, your skill very often has to be given freely. You have to give of your skill to others. You have to train others, teach others, give to others exceptionally out of your own time, very often without reward. 
For Capricorn, Moon, Capricorn, Lagna, Scorpio has your 11th house. So such intense karmas coming from past life situations are taking effect in your friendship circles. Your friends or those you've known before have these intense karmas with you or continuing. So jealousy, difficulty, disputes can be there, especially when Mars is not well placed in your chart. If Mars is, this this will be definitely lessened for you. But still, there will be sudden breaks with friendships very often over your deeply held Held belief systems which Scorpio entrenches here because they are absolutely coming from past life experience and your income because of Scorpio karmic intensity will go up and down fluctuating especially when Mars is not well aspected but ultimately you control this so Mars can be helpful for you because he is exalted in your sign. So very often you are able to find a very good steady income in some way at some point in your life. But income is another factor though when it comes to family because Aquarius has the rulership of your second house of early childhood. There was some loss there. You may have not got family property. You may have got loss or lack of resources in your early family environment. You have to make your own wealth in life very often due to this Capricorn likeness. So Aquarius gives these losses family wise. You have to sacrifice for your family very often. You have to give them money which you have earned that can sometimes be seen. Aquarius moon, Aquarius lagna. The heavy Aquarius karmas mean that there is loss whenever you are trying to put the spotlight onto yourself. This life is about serving others, giving your time to others, being of use to others in some way. You are impelled to it and actually it's the only way that you get deep satisfaction. You may have a deep political cause which you give your whole life to or if not so extreme, you are always giving of yourself for others' needs during this lifetime. But Scorpio has the rulership of your 10th house Aquarius. So when you are putting into play your humanitarian force and your giving, if it goes into your career as it, as it often will, you will come into great conflict with others. It will never go smoothly. Superiors, co-workers, there can be conflicts, manipulation, secrecy, all sorts of underhand factors depending on the strength of Mars. The more Mars is afflicted, the more difficult you will find it in your public life. And it's all part of the test which you have to go through to keep on with the sacrifice and the work which is your destiny. Pisces moon, Pisces lagna both. Scorpio has the rulership of your ninth house. The intense Scorpio karmas and all the transformations take place when you go into foreign lands. It can go not very well for you depending on the placement of Mars, but you get occult knowledge, religious factors from foreign land which turn your life upside down. They're coming back to you directly from past life experience. Your father may be undergoing transformation changes in his life or, or even in his health and this affects you profoundly but there is a deep relationship with your father also and actually there are secrets mysteries connected to your father which you may only find out later on in life sometimes that can be seen your 12th house is Aquarius Aquarius actually does well in this 12th house for the one factor that where you have to sacrifice, where you have to give, this is the house of charity. So you are a most charitable person. So these Aquarius karmas can be dealt with by giving as you do continually to a good cause. But Aquarius is also lost. So very often financially money is slipping through your fingers and unwittingly there is financial loss in your life. Thanks for watching. I hope the video was informative for you all. Don't forget to sub to my channel if you haven't already. Goodbye for now. God bless everyone.